Merci bien. Veuillez vous asseoir. I now invite the Secretary General of the Global Center for Pluralism, Mr. John McNee, to offer introductory remarks. J'invite maintenant le Secrétaire Général du Centre Mondial du Pluralisme, Mr. John McNee, à prononcer le mot d'ouverture. Your Excellency, Your Highness, Madame la Ministre, Excellencies, Friends of the Global Center for Pluralism. I'm John McNee, and it's my great honor to serve as the Secretary General of this center. I wish you all a very warm welcome on behalf of His Highness the Aga Khan and the Board of Directors. Mesdames et Messieurs, je vous souhaite une très chaleureuse bienvenue à l'ouverture officielle du siège social du Centre mondial du pluralisme. Il nous fait grand plaisir de vous accueillir en si grand nombre aujourd'hui. Today, we express deep thanks to the Center's two founding partners, His Highness the Aga Khan, whose vision led to the creation of the Center, and the Government of Canada, which has invested in the institution as a fully equal partner. In addition to creating a new global institution to advance pluralism, this unique partnership has made possible the revitalization by His Highness of this historic building. We are absolutely delighted to welcome His Excellency the Governor General and to count him among the center's most ardent champions. His pursuit of excellence and innovation for Canadians is matched only by his commitment to the diplomacy of knowledge. That is, the belief that knowledge to a purpose has the power to change the world. Identifying in pluralism is one of the most important things. Identifying with the other. Identifying with that person 
who is not you and who would never be you because they may be another color, another race, another religion, have other cultural values. That recognition that they are they and you are you is terribly important and that is the basis of pluralism. Very simply, I think pluralism is the right to be different. Uh, we live in a diverse world. Not everybody is the same. Somebody once said, if two people are exactly the same, one of them is irrelevant. And so there is beauty and strength, I think, in diversity. And uh, the right to be different and the celebration of being different is what pluralism is all about. Je pensais à une société qui est diversifiée, pluraliste. C'est une société où, euh, par exemple, votre voisin de palier euh, est différent, enfin, il s'habille différemment. Les, les parfums de cuisine qui émanent de son appartement sont différents de, des vôtres. Euh, sur le palier en dessous, il y a encore une famille différente. De nouveau, la cuisine est différente, les vêtements sont différents, la langue est différente. Mais au fond, ce sont vos amis, parce que vous comprenez, vous avez été chez eux pour des fêtes nationales, vous avez été chez eux pour des fêtes religieuses, vous avez mangé avec eux, et vous comprenez tout à fait non seulement pourquoi tout ceci est tellement différent et étranger et peut-être un peu exotique pour vous, mais ça devient familier parce que vous avez appris à les connaître. Despite our differences, and indeed in part to celebrate them, we need to find also what holds us together the language of dignity, the language of respect, the language of compassion, the language of what it is to be a human being, which we all share. We're seeing a number of disruptive effects unfolding. Uh, economic globalization, which has led to higher levels of economic inequality. We're seeing a rapid technological change, which is disrupting societies, disrupting uh, groups and associations and individuals' sense of their own identity. Today, more than ever, pluralism is essential because it's a way of preventing uh, further destabilization in different parts of the world and hopefully improving uh, what has been happening in terms of conflicts in, in certain regions. So it's a way of building peace. The world has become a small place. People don't live in isolation anymore. They don't live in just one particular area where everybody uh, is from the same origin necessarily. In a world like this, people have to learn how to live together. They learn how to accept new ideas. They learn how to accept that truths are not absolute, but uh, are usually relative in nature. And if you learn to accept new ideas and other people's ideas, that's one way of renewal and, and progress. While diversity in our populations is a fact of life, we still haven't developed the intellectual and emotional comfort to be able to live with it and to be able to recognize that it's a, it's a value, it shouldn't be a source of conflict. I think the center has to help educate it has to help reach out to populations. It has to help bring people together to discuss these issues, to discuss the challenges that we face today through its research, through the seminars it organizes, through its discussion with political leaders, encourage pluralism, tolerance, and understanding. Three Thirty Sussex is a historic building in the heart of the ceremonial district of Ottawa. It has a history of the country's memory. It was the Dominion Archives. Uh, it has a history as a war museum, and it is now being converted into one of the most important values that Canada can now project into the world uh, as the headquarters of the Global Center for Pluralism. It is the board's aspiration that the building become a center for thoughtful exchange, for radiating partnerships, for concentrating energy and ideas around this important issue uh, of pluralism. Uh, and that the building become a vibrant center of activity that allows us to continue to expand the boundaries of the possible in relation to an increasingly diverse world becoming increasingly pluralist as well. 
I've seen situations where people would argue about events that happened 150 years ago as if it was yesterday and fight over it, realizing that there are many other things that they could agree on that unites us, values that we share, that we should stress. I have found often in my life this, people expect you to define yourself. What are you? Who are you? Where are you from? And I can't do that personally. And therefore, people who don't accept that, who seem shocked or surprised or upset, I you know, recognize in them an absence of understanding of pluralism. So it's personally important to me. But it's also important because every country that I've ever lived in and ever worked in has a multitude of different traditions and different ethnicities. And this is something that makes the beauty of our world. And I want my children to grow up in a world where the 140 nationalities in their school understand each other and live together in peace. It is my honor to invite His Highness the Aga Khan, Chair of the Center's Board of Directors, to offer remarks. J'ai l'honneur d'inviter Son Altesse Sol Aga Khan, Président du Conseil d'administration du Centre, à prononcer un discours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Your Excellency, the Governor General, Madame la Ministre, Excellencies, fellow directors of the Global Center for Pluralism, friends of the Center. What a great day this is for all of us. And what a special ceremony as we honor a beautiful symbol of Canada's rich past and rededicate it to the great cause of pluralistic global future. As you know, the War Museum building was designed well over a century ago by the great Canadian architect, David Ewart. For its first half century, it was the home of the Dominion's archives. And then for another half century, we knew it as the War Museum. For over 100 years, all told, it was a place where the record of Canada's proud and confident past was preserved and honored. I think you will agree with me that the past still speaks to us in this place. The architects, the designers, the engineers, and so many others who have rehabilitated this wonderful Tudor Gothic building have taken enormous care to respect its distinctive historic character. We all join today in saluting the design and engineering team led by KPMB, the construction team led by MP London Construction, and so many other dedicated staff and volunteers who have contributed to this project. J'aimerais partager une autre pensée alors que nous tournons nos regards vers ce passé, si digne de respect. Je trouve en effet très approprié que cette cérémonie ait lieu cette année, l'année du 150e anniversaire de la Confédération canadienne. Je suis heureux de pouvoir me compter au nombre de ceux qui, cette année, évoquent avec une fierté particulière notre histoire canadienne. La raison en est bien sûr la générosité dont ce pays a fait preuve à mon égard il y a plusieurs années en m'octroyant le titre de citoyen honoraire du Canada. But even as we celebrate the past today, we're looking ahead with joy and confidence to a particularly exciting future. That future has also been symbolized by those who renewed this building in two compelling ways. First, they created a new garden in the forecourt, a tranquil space for contemplating the past and thinking about the future. 
And then secondly, they made a dramatic new gesture for the future by opening this building to the river. When I first visited the site, I went across the Ottawa River to see, see things from the opposite side. From that perspective, I noticed that many buildings on the Ontario side had, over the years, turned their backs to the river. But as we began to plan, another possibility became evident. It seemed increasingly significant to open the site to the water. Water, after all, has been seen down through the ages as the great source of life. When scientists search the universe for signs of life, they begin by looking for water. Water restores and renews and refreshes. And opening ourselves and our lives to the water is to open ourselves and our lives to the future. In addition, the Ottawa River represents a powerful connection to other places nearby and far away. It is not only a refreshing symbol, it is also a connecting symbol, connecting this site to the rest of Canada and the rest of the world. Throughout the history of Canada, the Ottawa River has been a meeting place for diverse peoples, originally the First Nations, and then the British and the French, and more recently, Canadians from many different backgrounds. It symbolizes the spirit of connection. And the spirit of connection, of course, is at the very heart of the Global Center for Pluralism. The new forecourt garden suggests that the center will be a place for contemplation and reflection. And the opening to the river suggests that it will also be a place for connection and engagement. What happens at 330 Sussex Drive in the years ahead will radiate well out beyond its walls to the entire world. Let me emphasize a point about the concept of pluralism that is sometimes misunderstood. Connection does not necessarily mean agreement. It does not mean that we want to eliminate our differences or erase our distinctions. Far from it. What it does mean is that we connect with one another in order to learn from one another and to build our future together. Pluralism does not mean the elimination of difference, but the embrace of difference. Genuine pluralism understands that diversity does not weaken a society, it strengthens it. In an ever-shrinking, ever more diverse world, a genuine sense of pluralism is the indispensable foundation for human peace and progress. From the start, this has been a vision that the Ismaili Imamat and the Government of Canada have deeply shared. My own close association with Canada began more than five decades ago with the coming to Canada of many thousands of Asian Ismailis, essentially as the result of Idi Amin's anti-Asian policies in Uganda. That relationship has been reinforced through the years, as we have shared with our Canadian friends in so many great adventures here in Canada and in other lands, including the Global Centre for Pluralism. The Centre has been from the start a true partnership, a breakthrough partnership, a genuine public-private partnership. And one of my central messages today is how deeply grateful we are to all of those who have made this partnership so effective. It was with Prime Minister Jean Chrétien that we first discussed the idea of founding a new pluralism center. And it was Prime Minister Paul Martin who helped develop the plan. Prime Minister Stephen Harper's government sealed the partnership. And Minister Bayorda then signed with me the establishing agreement. 
Minister Melanie Jolie has also given strong support to the GCP. And Prime Minister Trudeau has articulated with conviction and with passion the need for pluralism in our world. I think today so many other public servants who have helped guide this effort, including Universities of Canada, the IDRC, and other past and present members of the corporation of the GCP. And I also thank the fine cooperation we have received from the Canadian Mint, who will share with us in occupying one wing of this building. As we celebrate the progress we have made today, we also recognize the growing challenges to our mission as nativist and nationalist threats to pluralism rise up in so many corners of the world. In responding to these challenges, the Global Center for Pluralism has planned a variety of new initiatives. Among them are the new Global Pluralism Awards, which will recognize pluralism in action around the world, as well as a distinguished series of new publications. As we look today, both to the past and to the future, we do so with gratitude to all those who have shared in this journey and who now share in our pursuit of new dreams. Among them is someone whom we welcome today not only as a st distinguished statesman, but also as one whose personal support has inspired us all. It is a pleasure and an honor to present to you His Excellency the Right Honorable David Johnston, the Governor General of Canada. Thank you. Your Highness, Minister Jolie, Excellencies, distinguished guests, let me begin by uh, thanking His Highness for that stirring message about this place and about pluralism in the world. And as I was listening to those remarks, I was thinking of the revitalization of this place and this building. Uh, here we are on the opening of the Center for Pluralism. And this building has come from the War Museum this is a wonderful application of that uh, statement from the Bible, swords into plowshares. Isn't that fascinating, swords into plowshares? And of course, the earlier iteration of this building was the uh, Dominion Archives and Library of Canada, where we began to collect our history, our civilization, so that we would uh, remember and respect our past to prepare for our future. And that, too, has been revitalized in this wonderful Center for Pluralism, which reminds me of one of my favorite metaphors. It's Jefferson's candle, and the light reflects knowledge. That candle is on my coat of arms. And Jefferson once said, when you light your unlit candle from my lit candle, my light is not diminished, it is enhanced. And what we see here, of course, is a great opportunity of a candle light to the world with a plan we small with the uh, extension of the message of pluralism around the world. The world is my country. The human race is my race. Those are the words of Canadian poet and lawyer Frank Scott from his great poem, Creed. I do believe those words capture something of the creed of this global center for pluralism. The world is your country. The human race is your race. Le monde est votre pays. Le race humaine est votre race. Ce sont ces paroles qui guident le Centre Mondial de Pluralisme. A special thank you to His Highness, that great Canadian friend and honorary citizen, for showing such dedication to pluralism and to strengthening Canada's commitment to and leadership of this issue for the world. Your Highness, establishing this center in our capital city at this confluence of North America is a wonderful gift to Canada. 
I often speak, as you have, of the importance of knowledge diplomacy in our world, which I define simply as the process by which distinct peoples and cultures improve lives by sharing knowledge across borders and disciplines. Jefferson's candle. La diplomacy de savoir est un processus où les peuples et les cultures se rencontrent et vont au-delà des frontières et des disciplines. L'Aga Khan pratique bien la diplomacy de savoir. The Aga Khan is a wise practitioner of this brand of diplomacy. He appreciates that the success of our increasingly interdependent world is based on people of many faiths, cultures, and values expressing tolerance, openness, and understanding towards others. And as you were making that comment, I thought of that um, lovely phrase from um, Saint Exupéry's book. I think it was Le Petit Prince who said, uh, I am different from you, but because I am different, I do not diminish you, I enrich in you. The depth of His Highness's commitment to diplomacy and pluralism is quite simply profound. I know this from personal experience. We first met at another official opening 36 years ago in Karachi, Pakistan. The details may differ, but the underlying theme is the same, diverse people working together to improve lives. In essence, this is the challenge of pluralism. How do we ensure respect for diversity while sharing ideas and resources to improve our lives and societies? Well, your mission at the Global Center for Pluralism is to advance respect for diversity as a new global ethic and a foundation for inclusive citizenship. Ce centre est un lieu d'apprentissage qui met en commun les enseignements tirés du pluralisme, et ce, d'un point de vue canadien. I'd like to say just a few words about the importance of that mission, as well as Canada's unique opportunity to lead. First, why does pluralism matter? And we heard some fascinating answers a moment ago on the video. Well, I think the answer is as straightforward as it is urgent. Pluralism is critical to the long-term peace and prosperity of societies worldwide. Sans engagement envers le pluralisme, la diversité risque de se transformer trop facilement en source de conflit et de division. Too often we've seen conflicts and that division occur because of a lack of commitment to pluralism. So, what do we do? Well, we develop a narrative and approaches that ensure diversity is properly understood as a source of strength and prosperity. In other words, we need to develop and tell a compelling story, and we need ideas and plans for action to allow that story to unfold. If diversity is to be an asset and not a liability, we must allow diverse peoples to reach their full potential and to contribute as full and equal partners in our society. We must empower people to succeed. In other words, we must be inclusive. Canada has an opportunity, a responsibility perhaps, to demonstrate how pluralism is a viable and perhaps the only path to lasting peace and prosperity. So what is this confederation if not an exercise in pluralism amongst diverse peoples? Certains jugent parfois que l'engagement en faveur de la diversité n'est qu'un idéalisme utopique. C'est tout le contraire. Dans un univers hétérogène, mondialisé et technologique, rien n'est plus pragmatique qu'une société qui est inclusive et pluraliste. Diversity helps us to enrich our society. That's the great Canadian statement to better understand other countries and to forge connections with people around the planet. I don't need to tell you we have no reason for complacency here in Canada. Terrible, violent rejections of pluralism can and do happen here. But where Canada has failed in the past, for example, the disastrous residential schools policy, it has been in trying to reduce diversity and restrict inclusiveness. And where Canada has succeeded, it has been through a commitment to inclusiveness to pluralism. The Société Canadienne est à son meilleur lorsqu'elle reflète sa géographie vaste, immense et diversifiée. Canada is a constantly evolving experiment. It's a social experiment, it's a social innovation, and it's a bit challenging because it's an experiment in inclusiveness and making pluralism work. And this is what positions us to help to tell the pluralism story, not just here in Canada, but around the world. 
And Your Highness, that's why your work in the Global Center for Pluralism is so essential both for the Canadian experiment and for our capacity for people everywhere to live with difference, to live pluralism. I want to end with a personal story. I've reached the age where, uh, one, I enjoy telling stories, and my wife says you go on too long. <laughs> and two, where I really do see the world through the eyes of my children, five daughters, and my grandchildren, 14. And I say with sincerity that all the important things in life I've learned from my children, and I'm now relearning from my grandchildren. Our daughters grew up in a comfortable home, five of them, and uh, thanks to their church and thanks to the experiences of volunteer activities, they were exposed to difference fairly early on. And at age 12, they began international exchanges. Um, I could go on about the importance of that exposure, but let me just say, I watched four things happen to my daughters through the exposure to difference in their own communities, particularly hardship, and through the international experiences in many different countries around the world. The first thing is their natural curiosity was enhanced. Children are all curious. Their curiosity became a kind of more penetrating Why? Secondly, they became more tolerant. Not tolerant just in the sense of, I am different from you, and uh, you are different from me, but that's okay, nobody gets hurt. But, but why is that difference, and what is there about that difference, and what's the particular allure of that difference? So that tolerance was, had a capital T to it. Thirdly, their judgment became better. They were really quick to spot bigotry. They always looked for the other side of the story. They would often hesitate before coming to a conclusion until they'd gathered a little more evidence that they triangulated on the problem and saw it from a different angle. Mathematical, but very useful in human applications. But most important of all, they became more empathetic. Not just sympathetic, but empathetic. They could walk in the shoes of the other person. I wish you the very best in your magnificent quest and in your beautiful new home here in Canada and for the world. Merci. Your Excellence, that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> your Excellency, Your Highness, thank you for your great and touching words. Special guests, my parliamentary secretary, Arif Arani, uh, all the members of parliament that are here as well. Mesdames et messieurs, bonjour. Je suis ravie d'être avec vous aujourd'hui pour souligner cette occasion toute spéciale. Nous sommes ici, et nous l'avons rappelé à plusieurs reprises, sur le territoire traditionnel des Algonquins. Je tiens à les saluer. Je tiens d'abord à souligner le travail de son Altesse qui a permis de fonder, il y a plusieurs années, le Centre mondial du pluralisme en partenariat avec le gouvernement du Canada. Il est particulièrement remarquable d'avoir anticipé, il y a de cela au moins 15 ans, le besoin de promouvoir le respect de la diversité dans la société, lequel est depuis devenu un des grands enjeux planétaires. The vision of the Global Center for Pluralism is a world in which human differences are valued and diverse society thrive. Canada has the highest percentage of first-generation immigrant in the OACD. 20% of all the population is first immigrant, first-generation immigrant. So this is Canada's vision for a country and for our world. This is why our government stands behind the center and its so many worthy initiatives. And we appreciate His Highness's many other contribu contributions to Canada, which includes the Ergecan Museum in Toronto, which I had the chance to visit some months ago. Not to mention the important development cooperation with the Ergecan Development Network to improve lives of disadvantaged communities in Asia and Africa. As Minister responsible for multiculturalism, I congratulate the Global Center of Pluralism on the official opening of this new headquarters. I'm grateful for the wonderful work of renovation that was done to this historical building that is an integral part of the built heritage of the National Capital Region. Merci, thank you. His Excellency the Right Honorable David Johnston and His Highness the Aga Khan will now unveil the commemorative pla plaque to inaugurate the Global Center for Pluralism. Thank 
Excellency, Your Highness, Ambassadors, Minister, Senator, Parliamentarians, Your Worship, friends and colleagues all. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Global Center for Pluralism, for which I have the honor of being the chair of the Executive Committee, I thank you all for being here with us today on this marvelous occasion, which I think you'll agree is a warm and wonderful one, as befits the subject of this place, the people who have been involved in this, and our own personal commitment as a board. It's a little tiny board as these things go, about 12 of us, half Canadian, half international, and we have an absolutely wonderful time. And thank you, Your Excellency, as the representative of all Canadian people. You have graced us with the dignity of your office at this opening and by your intelligent presence and your sensitivity to everything. And to Your Highness, the Aga Khan, for your perception and vision in initiating the Global Center and for bringing Canada into it. Ever since I had the opportunity to first meet His Highness during my tenure as Governor General, I have realized how committed he is to a vision of the world that is both prophetic, imaginative, and realistic. And we're so fortunate that he has seen Canada as his friend and ally in the purposes which he so fittingly has called the message of the cosmopolitan ethic in this world. And no one has done more to create the conditions for peace in our world than the Aga Khan in his almost 60 years as Imam of the Ismaili. I've worked closely with him for many years now. I've tried to count them, so it's 17, I think. And I believe that his work with the Global Center and his initiative, which spurred the partnership with Canada and raised the interest of all our governments through the last 30 year, 50 years, is the driving force that has made possible this marvelous, tangible, yummy material building. It's just a delight, that building. And we've seen it all the way through. And we're very, very happy to see it being open today. The Aga Khan realized there was an urgent need to change the global conversation about diversity and that we can have a positive response to diversity if we realize that we must value our differences and regard them as positive for our progress as a human race. The partnership between Canada and the vast Aga Khan development network, which has been put in place during his time as Imam, must be praised and encouraged by anyone who wants peace and harmony in a world which is now so fraught with fear and trepidation and distrust. Elsewhere in the world, His Highness has put new resources into helping create strong civil societies. Here in Canada, we are his partner, and we are glad that we are able to fully participate in this partnership, which is of extraordinary importance in the world. Your Excellency, you mentioned the fact that pluralism is the heart of what we do. Perhaps this global center can be the stethoscope for that heart. We can share what we are with the rest of the world, even when we know that we haven't perfected it. It's honing ourselves on that route that is going to be the challenge to us. And those of us who have the honor of serving on the board of this wonderful center, know that the work is really only just beginning. We have had a terrific series of events and happenings and studies over these last five years, thanks to a wonderful staff working under John McNee. But now with our home, with this marvelous building, we're going to make, able, be able to make concrete all the things that you, Your Highness, have helped us to believe. And at a time when there is chaos and trepidation, let's hope that this center will give us a place to compare experiences and to welcome the world. You have helped us to do this, and we at the Global Center are grateful to you and the Government of Canada for your mutual initiative, which is prophetic, practical, and truly beautiful. Let's get that stethoscope going on our collective chest. Thank you.